Hi, I'm Corey Litzenberger from CGLTax.ca, and this is Brainstorming Plus Tax. In this episode of Brainstorming Plus Tax, we're going to take another look at the tax on split income rules. However, this one's going to be a little more technical than the last one. For those of you that listened to our last episode, you would know that we took the tax on split income rules and turned them into an escape room game for your enjoyment. And for some of you, you may be falling asleep already. So let's get into it. In December of 2017, the federal liberal government announced new tax rules that were intended to prevent tax planning using private corporations. One of the central pillars of those rules is expanding the tax on split income, or TOSI. Now, TOSI was originally intended to prevent splitting income with a child who was under 18 by applying high rate tax on split income earned by the child. This became affectionately known as the kitty tax. So in effect, the kitty tax or previous TOSI rules eliminated any benefits a family might otherwise realize from splitting business income among children in a lower tax bracket. The government expanded TOSI on January 1st, 2018, so it applies to adult family members too. Split income is a complex concept, but essentially it includes most characterizations of income earned from most types of structures, that is corporations, trusts, and partnerships, in respect of a related business. This episode is to provide a detailed discussion of the new rules that apply to 2018 and later years, including the concept of split income, the many exclusions from it, and to whom the tax on split income applies. So what is split income? Subject to the numerous excluded amounts, the split income of an individual for the year includes the following amounts. A. Taxable dividends from shares of a corporation, other than publicly listed shares and shares of a mutual fund corporation whether received directly or through a trust or partnership other than a mutual fund trust. B. Shareholder benefits, other than from ownership of publicly listed shares, whether conferred directly or through a trust or partnership other than a mutual fund trust. C. Other income received from a partnership or trust other than a mutual fund trust, where the income is derived by the partnership or trust from a related business. D. For 2014 and later years, income directly or indirectly paid to a specified individual from a trust or partnership, if derived from a business, rental property, partnership, or trust, the person related to the individual must be actively engaged on a regular basis in the activities of the particular trust or partnership earning business or rental income, or have an interest in the partnership whether through one or more partnerships. E effective for 2018 and later years, interest from a debt obligation of a corporation, trust, or partnership, unless the debt is publicly listed, guaranteed by the Canadian government, or a deposit at a bank or credit union. And F, effective for 2018 and later years, taxable capital gains or profit from the disposition of property or such amounts included in the individual's income as a beneficiary of a trust where the property is a an interest in a partnership, an interest in a trust, or a debt obligation, and b income from the property that was previously subject to TOSI or any value of the property is derived from a share in a corporation. Clearly the definition of split income is very broad and includes many different types of income. However, this is just one piece of a larger mechanism. And the list I just stated previously does not mean it will be subject to TOSI. There are numerous exclusions, which I will discuss in great detail. So what amounts are excluded from TOSI? TOSI does not apply to amounts that are considered an excluded amount. This term is actually a big list of exclusions, several of which have their own detailed definitions and conditions. I will describe all amounts excluded from TOSI, but I will expand where the exclusion is particularly complex later. Certain exclusions are available to all taxpayers. Others are available only to taxpayers aged 25 and older. And there are several generally more restrictive, exclusions for taxpayers that are aged 18 to 24. All of the exclusions that are unique for adult taxpayers apply for 2018 and subsequent tax years. 
excluded amounts consist of the following. 1. If the individual has not attained the age of 24 years before the year, the amount is from property acquired as a consequence of death of the individual's parent or as the consequence of death of any person if the individual is a full-time student or eligible for the disability tax credit. 2. Amounts received from property that was transferred from a spouse or common law partner due to separation. 3. Deemed dispositions occurring as a result of the individual's death. 4. Taxable capital gains from the disposition of qualified farm or fishing property or qualified small business corporation shares. 5. Amounts not derived from a related business in respect of the individual if the individual attained the age of 17 before the current tax year. 6. Amounts derived from an excluded business if the individual attained the age of 17 before the current tax year. 7. An amount that is safe harbor capital return if the individual attained the age of 17 but not 24 before the current tax year. 8. An amount that is income or a capital gain from an excluded share if the individual attained the age of 24 before the current tax year. 9. A reasonable return, provided the individual attained the age of 17 before the current tax year. And 10. An amount relating to a spouse or common law partner who is at least 64 years old or deceased. Now, amount 5 is a particularly important exclusion because it excludes all amounts that are not from a related business. As such, amounts that are from a related business are subject to TOSI unless one of the other exclusions is met. Let's talk about related business. The definition of a related business is generally the starting point for determining whether the TOSI applies to split income amounts received by a taxpayer. If the amounts are from a related business, generally the next step is to determine whether any of the other exclusions I previously stated apply. So, what is a related business? Well, in simple terms, split income from a related business can be thought of as income earned by the individual from a business of a source individual. Now, a source individual is an individual who is related to the specified individual and is resident in Canada. That is, the specified individual is the person who receives split income and the source individual is the person running the business from which the split income is derived. If the split income is from a related business, it is subject to TOSI unless it meets another exclusion. Note that for the purpose of these rules, spouses or common law partners who are living separate due to a marriage breakdown are not considered to be related. A related business in respect of an individual includes a business carried on by a source individual or a partnership, corporation, or trust if a source individual is actively engaged on a regular basis in the activities of the partnership, corporation, or trust related to earning income from the business. A related business also includes a business of a partnership in which the source individual has an interest. A related business also includes a business of a corporation if the following conditions are met at any time in the year. A. The source individual owns shares of the corporation or some property that derives its value from shares of the corporation. And B. The source individual's total value of property referred to in A is greater or equal to 10% of the fair market value of all the corporation's issued shares. If the individual receives split income from a related business, TOSI will apply unless any of the other exclusions I previously listed are met. Note that the related business exclusion applies only where the individual attained the age of 17 before the year. Thus, where a minor under 18 in the year receives any income amounts that are split income, the amounts can be subject to TOSI, notwithstanding other potential exclusions, even if they are not from a related business. So now we need to look at excluded business. So what is an excluded business? 
The definition of an excluded business can apply to individuals who attain the age of 17 before the current year. This exclusion essentially applies where, in the government's view, the individual has contributed a sufficient amount of labor to the business to justify the income as compensation. An excluded business is a business where the individual is actively engaged on a regular, continuous, and substantial basis in the activities of the business in the current year, or in any five prior years. An individual is deemed to be actively engaged if the individual works in the business at least an average of 20 hours per week during the portion of the taxation year of the individual that the business operates, or met this requirement for any five prior years. Again, the five prior tax years does not need to be consecutive, just a total of five. In any other case, whether an individual is actively engaged depends on the facts and the circumstances. Should an individual split income be received from an excluded business, all of that income is exempt from TOSI. Where the individual attained the age of 17 but not 24 before the current tax year, there is an exclusion for what is called safe harbor capital return. Now, subject to other exclusions, safe harbor capital return places a limit on how much income can be split with young adult family members before TOSI applies. Safe harbor capital return is exempt from TOSI and cannot exceed an imputed rate of return on the fair market value of capital contributed to the business by the individual. The product of the value of contributed capital and the highest quarterly prescribed rate published by the CRA in the year, which is currently only 2% at the time of this broadcast, is the safe harbor capital return that an individual can receive without applying TOSI every year. Now, safe harbor capital return is a factor of arm's length capital, which we will get to shortly. Now, the excluded share exclusion only applies if the individual attained the age of 24 before the current year. When it comes to excluded share, this definition is cumbersome, and there are several conditions that must be met for this exclusion to apply. But if the individual's split income is found to be from an excluded share, then all of that income is not subject to TOSI. The individual's shares are excluded shares if A. Less than 90% of the business income of the corporation for the most recent taxation year of the corporation that ended was from the provision of services. B. The corporation is not a professional corporation, i.e., the professional practice of an accountant, dentist, lawyer, medical doctor, veterinarian, chiropractor. C. The individual owns the shares of the corporation that give the individual at least 10% of the votes and at least 10% of the fair market value of the corporation. And D. 90% or more of the gross income of the corporation for its most recent tax year is not derived from any related business of the individual other than the corporation's own business. Perhaps the most subjective exclusion from the TOSI is where the amounts received by the individual are a reasonable return. This exclusion applies only where the individual has attained the age of 17 before the year. In determining whether an amount is reasonable, the government examines the relative contributions to the business by the individual and the related family members. Specifically, reasonableness is based on many subjective terms, such as 1. The work they performed in support of the business. 2. The property they contributed directly or indirectly in support of the business. 3. The risks they assumed in respect of the business. 4. Any amounts that were paid to them directly or indirectly in respect of the business. And 5. Such other factors as may be relevant. However, for young adult individuals who have not attained the age of 24 before the current year, the reasonable test is restricted so that the determination of whether an amount is reasonable only regards the contributions of arm's length capital by the individual. Arm's length capital is essentially capital contributed to the business by the individual that was not acquired as income or a gain derived from a related business, was not borrowed money, 
or was not transferred from a person related to the individual. Simply put, only contributions of arm's length capital are factored into whether amounts paid to an individual under 25 years old are reasonable. When determining whether the amount is reasonable on the basis of labor contributed to the business by an individual younger than 25, the excluded business exclusion must be relied on instead. Now, where an individual receives split income in the year, but the amount would be excluded by virtue of any of the previous mentioned exclusions, had it been received by the individual spouse or common law partner, and the spouse or common law partner had attained the age of 64 before the current year or is deceased, then the amount is excluded from TOSI for that individual. Simply put, the age 64 exclusion allows a business owner to split income with their spouse in their retirement years. If and when the business owner dies and structured their business so that it continues paying income to their living spouse, they don't have to worry about TOSI applying to those amounts. To summarize everything, it's complicated. The rules discussed here are different than when they were first presented in July of 2017. These rules were and are very controversial, so much so that the government revised their July 2017 proposals five months later in December of 2017. Now, even after the government changed them, these new rules are very troublesome to navigate. They can affect a wide variety of business owners who pay income to their family members. And it is not an exact science to determine where income splitting ends and TOSI begins. Therefore, going forward, it is important to consider these new rules when paying income from your business to any family members. Perhaps seeking advanced tax advisors like ourselves is warranted. And with that, for CGL Strategic Business and Tax Advisors, I'm Corey Litzenberger. Thanks for listening.